Hello everyone. My name is Tiberius Ignat from Scientific Knowledge Services, a small company which works with academic institutions, with research organizations, research libraries and publishers to disseminate transfer knowledge and to make the transition to open science. I was invited to speak in November 2020 at Cambridge University. The invitation has been launched by the Office of Scholarly Communication from this university. The topic was the reuse of research data. I suggested to the Office of Scholarly Communication to talk from a narrow perspective about reusing research data. It's repurposed by machines and the possibility to granting data rights to machines. Humans Humans are weak at peripherals. We don't have the best vision. Our arms are not strong enough. We don't hear weak noises. First, we invented physical devices to help us. Then we realize we are not good enough to calculate, to remember things or to combine information. So we came with something new, digital solutions. Let me say clear, we could be happy with all these solutions and devices. The problem is that we don't know where to stop. Once Mahatma Gandhi said, the world has enough for everyone's need, but not enough for everyone's greed. The same here. After building machines to help us through with our weak peripherals, we started to create another kind of machines, algorithms, to guide us through life. They were first used as recommendation engines. They grew then in matchmaking platforms and became later creatures that deliver micro-targeting and psychographic profiling. The laters are trained to persuade humans. These machines stay stay at the core of platform economies, like social networks, online commerce, and news platforms, to name a few. They, are all, they also penetrated the core of democracy, the election processes, and the public governance. I already mentioned that we don't know where to stop, right? Not only that we created such non-human persuaders, but we designed them to pretend they are humans. Recent technological breakthroughs in artificial intelligence have made it possible for machines to pass as one of us. A couple of years ago, a well-trained human used to recognize their perfect grammar and a bit lengthier sentences indeed. But how are we doing now? Emilio Ferrara is data scientist at University of Southern California in Los Angeles. He studies social media robots to understand how they can change people's beliefs and behaviors. In a recent interview, he was asked how effective are these robots at spreading this information. We learned from him that four years ago, people retweeted content originated by robots at almost the same rate at which they retweeted content originated by humans. Today, the number of users retweeting robots has been dramatically diminished. But wait, he couldn't say if the internet platforms are doing better at detecting these persuasive robots and suspending them or that they can no longer identify them. My message is simple, machines should not be allowed to persuade humans. Research data should be kept away from persuasive machines. Build machines to do something else, but not to persuade people. It is so unfair. I think I have a fair chance to remain in control when another human persuades me to buy something, to vote for someone, to turn left and not right. But I have almost no chance 
to protect myself from algorithm persuasion, which is set to persuade me. This robot will know a lot about me from my digital footprint. And even if I gain an apparent confidence that I remain in control, I have great doubts that it, I will be good enough to train my son and my daughter to, to retain control of their actions in a world infested with such robots. Older generations have the greatest difficulty to survive the attacks. So what has, what all of this has to do with research data? I use this opportunity to speak with you during Cambridge uh, Data Week in 2020 and other researchers like you to convince you that no research data from public projects at least should be available to feed and to develop these persuasive algorithms, the non-human persuaders. This is an invitation to all researchers to start attaching the right licenses for the reuse of their data sets and to ban their data to be used by non-human persuaders. I don't see any good reason for which researchers should continue to contribute to perfection the art of machine persuasion. Now I realize that my presentation, this presentation is about how not to reuse your research data. I wish I was in a position to say about how to reuse it. Unfortunately, I am convinced that we are in a sad position in which we need, to, we need now to correct an existing wrong practice rather than designing the future from the scratch. Harm has already been done. This is why I decided to take a very narrow approach research data and persuasive robots and decided to suggest you not what not to do instead of what to do. Protect your research data from persuasive algorithms. I work in a research project uh, which involves citizen science and is rel relatively big. Uh, we, we are 11 partners spread across Europe and is led by Coventry University. We want to understand how we are tracked by default when we use internet and mobile apps. One thing we, say, we, we can say so far is how amazed we are by the level of surveillance human experience. Most of this surveillance being perfectly European GDPR compliant. Have you noticed how hard it is to manage your internet cookies? Have you noticed that once again, you started to lose control of your cookies under the smoke screen of legitimate interests. Share data with responsibility. We see it as an epic battle for data, which is the grassland for robots. Persuasive robots lose their orientation without your data and those that need them, the, the robots, have no intention to abandon their doubtful practices. So I'm asking you again, would you like to contribute to the development of such system by allowing your data to be used for questionable purposes? Do you agree with that? Here are two examples, which I hope will invite you to consider how to reuse your data. Today, healthcare decisions are often informed by algorithms. They are called AI assisted clinical decision tools, algorithmic decision tools for healthcare and similar. Based on some algorithms, your doctor is informed about the decision she needs to make for your health. This is a widespread reality in developed countries. These algorithms rely on massive research and clinical data. The most advanced ones are supposed to use research data from both science and humanities because the social context of a medical condition matters for most for both diagnosis and treatment now i do support the path of using research data to build ai artificial intelligence for for healthcare but i support this as long as it doesn't use persuasion technologies if this clinical decision robot will be programmed to persuade doctors 
and through some capillaries to persuade patients, our society will become a very dangerous place to live in. How far are we from that situation? I believe we are inches away. If we don't take action, if we don't make sure that the, the availability of research data becomes a tool to protect us against human, non-human persuasion, we lose an important opportunity to keep our society safe. A black box algorithm which persuades a doctor to place a person in a particular healthcare program sounds like a dangerous thing to me. Doctors, like all other trained professionals, should be supported in their epistemic authority and not misled and or even worse, undermined. So data reuse, I repeat, protect your data from persuasive algorithms. My second example is coming from humanities, uh, from scholarly communication, to be more precise. The content used in syndication platforms. Some of these platforms are used by researchers in orders of magnitude more than library services. Now, I don't even want to suggest there is a malicious intention behind scholarly content syndication platforms. I believe they started with honest intentions, but as they choose the path of non-human persuasion, they should know that they took on board a responsibility larger than what humans are and were able at that moment to comprehend. These, there are a number of publishers that associate their current business strategies to content syndication in such persuasive platforms. A particular attention is required towards those publishers and libraries, yes, libraries as well, that apparently link their open access strategies to content syndication and to content platforms that employ persuasive algorithms. We need AI tools to improve researchers' activity. That's right, tools for lab notes, for data sharing, for improving academic writing. Some experts think these AI tools will learn from training data generated by annotating research articles. In addition, I think they will also learn from the man-machine supervised learning for data curation activities. But there are bigger ambitions already on the table. Same, same experts think that the bigger AI project in, projects in scholarly communication have the apparent goal of automating research more broadly, particularly in the area of hypothesis generation. This is something that I want you to, to think very careful about. Do you agree with persuasive technologies embedded in such algorithms that stay behind research content syndication platforms or behind bigger AI projects that could in a short future now influence the hypothesis generation in research? Are you confident that a research environment controlled by a handful of persuasive algorithms will continue to serve the interest of our broader society? If the answer is no, why would you make research data available to be reused by persuasive algorithms? AI needs to ingest data in massive amounts in order to develop. Probably a good indicator is to look at what cookies are collected by these platforms and what legitimate interest, once again, the users are required to agree by default when using these platforms. It is not a proxy to learn about the level of persuasion. I agree, but it could be considered at least a modest indicator for that level. I am happy to discuss this in more one-to-one uh, -one conversations. So, once again, data reuse, among first things, protect your research data from persuasive algorithms. I anticipate that some, some of you will ask whether my presentation is relevant for today's state of research uh, data reuse, 2020. My answer is not only that it is, 
but through actions that we take now, we might be able to discourage future undesired actions regarding the reuse of research data. If you don't agree that non-human persuasion is already a great threat for humankind, I invite you at least to become preventive. The art of persuasion appears in the first pages of human history. Now aliens became real characters in our history books. So thank you once again for watching this presentation. I hope it gives you enough thoughts to consider how to reuse research data. By all means, I'm not against transparency in regards to research data. I support to be open as much as possible, close as much as necessary with research data. I do think that having transparency in research data will, be, will, will create, first of all, more, uh, more research data at high quality and will create the prerequisite of verifying the research conclusions. But I do think that sharing research data with persuasive robots is not a good thing for humankind. Researchers are acting at the frontier of knowledge. I don't think, first of all, that these research ro robots, these, uh, sorry, these persuasive robots should exist. Robots to persuade humans, it, 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 it's such a bad idea. But robots that ingest the knowledge that stays at the frontier, at the frontier of what we know, I think they will become even more dangerous because they will be, at that moment, they will become agile in persuading us. So once again, I in a way regret that this presentation is about what not to do in the reuse of research data. But I think that at this moment, the end of 2020, it is better to concentrate on this aspect, to make sure that the research data is not available for persuasive algorithms that are designed to persuade people. Thank you for watching and I'd be very pleased to stay in contact.